Hello and um, welcome back to Astronomy Club. Um, sorry we haven't had one for a while. Um, as you probably understand, life is a bit chaotic. Um, but I'm trying to set it up again for this term. Um, so once again, if there is anything in particular that you would like to know or um, you're particularly interested in, then let me know and I will try and include it. So today is Epiphany. And I thought that that would be a good time to talk about the star of Bethlehem. Um, as uh, as many of you know, I am a Christian anyway, and so I find this um, area of um, of astronomy and um, of the Bible stories quite interesting. Um, and it's fun to talk about um, Christmassy things for one last time. Um, and it's also particularly relevant because I don't know if any of you managed to see the um, conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn just before Christmas. Um, I kept missing it for ages because, um, so I didn't see it when it was at its closest, which I think was the 21st of December, um, because it was cloudy for most of the time then. Um, but hopefully some of you managed to, to get to see it. Anyway, so the star of Bethlehem was, what was it? Um, so Matthew chapter two says that after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. So we all know from the nativity story that the wise men followed a star. Um, and back in those days, um, in, in fact, probably mostly before Galileo's time, um, there wasn't astronomy as such. It was all really astrology. So looking at the stars and um, trying to predict things and believing that the stars pointed to important events and things like that. Now, obviously, some people still believe that, um, but it was a massive, um, massive thing um, back in. Um, in those days and the magi the wise men uh, would have been the, uh, some of those people that looked to the stars to tell them um, of important events um, and they saw something unusual in the sky so something that wasn't normally there they obviously knew the night sky pretty well they were in those days again the things were darker so the night sky was a lot more obvious Plus, you didn't have TV to watch, so more people would have been outside and seeing um, the stars. And this unusual star would have been an omen of something that is happening, something different. Um, and it was in the, um, the it led them westwards um, to Israel, so because they were from the east. So they were moving towards the west. So this, the star was in the western sky. But what could it have been? And there are many um, theories in this. And feel free to have a look at uh, some of these ideas in a bit more detail because I'm just going to touch on them now. Um, one theory is a supernova. Um, so it could have been a supernova, which um, if the... If there's a supernova in our galaxy, it would be so bright that you would be able to see it in the daylight. Um, and so it probably wasn't that because it does mention in the Bible that Herod didn't know about this star. Um, and if it, was, if it was a supernova, everyone would have known about it. Uh, if, even though they haven't got social media to tell everyone, they just need to look outside and they'd see it. it it's a star that you can see in the daytime. So it's very bright. Um, and at nighttime, it would be crazy. Um, it could have been a so supernova in another galaxy, although they're quite hard to detect. So um, it would have had to have been a very bright one um, for it to be that. Um, but they do stay bright for a, a couple of weeks. Um, the other problem with the supernova explanation is that it says the star moves and stops over Beth Bethlehem. Um, so a supernova wouldn't appear to move. Um, another thing, and this would appear to move, is a comet. 
Um, there was a comet that went uh, that that was around in five BC, um, and Halley's comet, which uh, is probably the most famous of comets, um, would have been visible in twelve BC. Um, so there are two possibilities, although uh, this wouldn't appear to stop. So the the whole idea of it moving and stopping over Bethlehem. Um, and also there's no mention of a tail and you'd think, you'd think they'd mention that. Oops, sorry, wrong way. <coughs> um, one of my favourite um, explanations is a conjunction, which is what we saw just before Christmas. Um, so before Christmas, it was between Jupiter and Saturn. There's a few conjunctions around the time of Jesus's birth. Now, obviously, we don't know exactly when Jesus was born. And so that that makes it a, a bit trickier. Um, uh, but there was a conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn again, um, probably a bit too late for Jesus. Um, there was also a conjunction of um, Jupiter and Venus, which is quite... Um, um, oh, what's the word? It, it's quite meaningful because Jupiter is uh, the, the god of the planets, the god of gods. And Venus is the god of love, and so that's a quite quite a nice tie-in there. There was also a conjunction with a very bright star, which is called Regulus, which is the king of stars, Reg, king. Um, so that's another quite quite nice um, thing. And so the uh, the mage, I could have thought, oh, the the king of planets, the king of stars, and and that might be why they got the um, this idea of an important king being born. Um, so that that's another um, possibility. Um, those conjunctions would have to be very close to each other. Um, the conjunction before Christmas is the closest that Jupiter and Saturn have been for a few hundred years. Um, and you could still see that they were separate, separate from each other. Um, so this would would um yeah would probably have to be even closer um than that um so that is some of the um the possibilities of of where the um star of bethlehem came from so i hope you found that interesting and if you want to um find out any more about that then feel free to have do a bit of re research let me know what you find out um and please do let me know if there's anything in particular that you would like to learn and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.